a not super surprising Sion actually an interesting adaptation after watching the other game I guess and Aurelia and Oriana being banned by Sudden Fear and Sion it should probably be a standard ban in the OPL so far as it's done so so much work even Christmas Trees putting in a wonderful performance in that champion reminiscent of both I believe Kadrid and Swiper who've played excellent Sion games super tanks that are reliable so very useful but banned away. Yep, banned away here for this one as 4 not considering their last ban now. Five seconds left and LeBlanc a very respectful ban to Apex. But Oriana also a respect ban page time. Oriana still, I believe, only the one victory it was actually Chief Swiffer managing to pick up the victory on Oriana. Otherwise, 1-4, one 1-5 and four, one and maybe is the result on Oriana, but the respect ban against Moya. Yeah, and actually the Nidalee going to be the first pick after last ban Caitlyn by Sudden Fear. So we talked about Rexa and Nidalee. We're probably going to do it a lot tonight, but Nidalee goes over to Team Fauna. And look, if you're a betting man, you have to think it's going to be a Nidalee mid, one of Moya's strongest champions. Played it in the OCS to great effect against Immunity during their qualifying run. Of course, the flexibility of potentially putting it into the jungle not so much Nidalee top these days, but still, Nidalee can go all over the map. No, and Sudden Fear, I believe, have already locked in the Ezreal. They do, and Lissandra is going to be their second pick. So, potentially mid Ezreal, lots of flexibility here in these picks. As you mentioned, flexibility is definitely the name of the game in the first three picks. Lissandra top or mid, Ezreal mid or AD carry. Flexibility abound, and four not. They're going to start shaping their draft now with these next two picks. Yeah, and you never know what to expect from a 4 no draft, I feel like. Sometimes they play standard. They almost always have something funky going on. And sometimes they just go all out 4 and play how they feel comfortable. And it's got them some decent looking games, but no wins yet. So 4 going to continue. And John Illusion, pretty standard lane. Yeah, but it's still very... The startings are potentially a siege comp coming through. Of course, the culling around structures, the Nidalee poke, a lot of turret damage coming through from the Lucian passive. But again, they haven't necessarily pigeoned the hold themselves into any sort of comp. And we're just waiting for the first kind of tip of the scales to find out what exactly how these lineups are going to react and just kind of come together with these last few yeah, picks. Just waiting for Sejuani to pop up or any sort sure. of crazy Naya champion. But sudden fear of a couple of picks now to go through as well. Had a lot of success already with Lucian, but that's picked away here by Fauna. I actually love their adaptive drafting. They obviously were watching, preparing for this game by watching the first one that Sudden Fear just played. And they've taken away or banned a lot of the champions that uh, Sudden Fear were playing. But Rengar here for Pink Bomi, that's been one of his go-tos. And Brawler, again, probably taking the Lulu. Yeah, for Lulu's support, we'll have to guess. But again, still flexibility with the Lulu pick. I do like the hard engage coming through. Of course, Nidalee, Lucian, Janna. These champions love to be aggressive. Janna has good disengage, but one of the best ways to deal with a Nidalee is special especially the AP Nidalee, who likes to be at the back line chucking spears, hard engage, and Rengar with the throw of the hunt, that's exactly what he does. Yeah, and Team Fauna here already having the Sejuani hover coming through as we do move around. I'm kind of surprised that Bomi didn't take Lee Sin, actually, given that he's looked quite strong in the, in the first game there, but going back to something he's played quite a lot of already in the OPL with the Rengar, and Fauna still have some picks to make here. I do like the Rengar over the Lee Sin when we're talking about a Nidalee comp. Nidalee's kind of the crown jewel of whatever comp she's in, whether it's as the, the jungler or the mid laner. When you're against Poke, Lee Sin, look, of course he can do a flashy engage with a ward hop with the kick, but so much easier just to go for the throw of the hunt, pop it and the hard engage, just unpredictable and just so very effective yeah, against Italy. For not they're doing some stuff here. We actually have Lee Sin picked him, so I think you're right about the mid laner, but that means that Carlos' god has Diana. Diana top. I mean Diana in an off lane. You have the flexibility of taking that Diana. I believe it's not the first Diana top we've actually seen in the OPL. It can work. It's a risky pick, especially considering it's potentially against a Lissandra. Double Dorans into maybe the Abyssal Scepter, the way to navigate the lane. If you ever get a split push going and Lissandra has to react to what you're doing, maybe it'll be fine. But with the infinite wave clear, you have to think coming through from Lissandra. Not necessarily seeing the benefit of the pick, but we'll have to wait to see what comes out from Sudden Fear. They could still pick a support and Brawler. He has a penchant for the Blitz. He does. Hovering the solo queue special there for Brawler. Loves that particular champion. But Fortnite still have a lot of flexibility. They're going to swap around pretty quickly. Obviously, they know what they want to take these champions, but lots of different places that they could go. And Sudden Fear, drafted with a lot of flexibility, could potentially take a support here last pick to really mix things up here. And I wonder if they want it. Brawler, I think he's telling his team that, guys, please give me Blitzcrank. It's going to be a last second decision, whatever it is. Waiting for the time to come through, and it's locked in. It's going to be the support. Blitzcrank means that we're going to be seeing Lulu in the top lane, in the mid lane. We still don't know exactly there's, the answer to that question. There's a lot of swapping here in this draft. Both teams have actually kind of tried to outmine game each other with some of the picks here, but seems like Fortnite will settle in with the top lane down and Nidalee in the solo lane. That's going to be Lissandra in the mid there coming through as well for Sudden Fear with Lulu in the top. And, of course, Brawler going to take his Blitzcrank. 
towards Crank. Yeah, Moya getting the Nidalee, though, is a significant thing to me. Moya's Nidalee can be so explosive. He has such great mechanics on this champion, both hitting the spears and also really skirting the edges of fights in melee range and getting those assassination exit kills. And a very practiced Nidalee. He's looked excellent when he's played it. A risky champion against Lissandra, though, and it doesn't look like he's going to necessarily take the cleanse to necessarily navigate the frozen tomb. Yeah, I mean, kind of needs to take the teleport to match it there, I guess. Oh, he's in the top lane. In the really. mid lane. Oh, in the mid lane. Sorry, you're right. So, heal there is a defensive summon. I do like that coming through, but we always have to look at Nidalee comps. They tend to be rather one-dimensional because Nidalee does one thing but does it very well, sure. which is poke and do assassination-style damage. What do you think of Diana adding to that sort of comp? I mean, Diana, she does have ranged wave clear with her Q. She is a melee champion, so in lane will struggle against the Lulu, but has wave clear in a melee versus range matchup, like I mentioned, in lane in the early levels, just trying to navigate towards the Abyssal Scepter in particular, trying to get towards uh, a position where she's able to take down the Lulu 1v1. But... Under, in siege situations, you have so many different things you have to navigate, whether it's the Lee Sin Q, whether it's the poke coming through from Nidalee, and then the, uh, the Qs coming through from Diana. There's a lot to think about if you're Sudden Fear. I think it's a bit of an overreach as a blind pick because, of course, there was so much flexibility that we had no idea what it was against, but there you go. Yeah, and guys, just to get your thoughts on the matchup, pretty crazy draft, but we'd love to know who do you think is going to win. Get on Twitter and use the hashtag 4NWin or SFWin for either Fauna or Sudden Fear. I mean, it's a very important game for both teams. Fauna just start getting a bit of momentum. Sudden Fear with their slim playoff hopes themselves. They want to move to that three and seven. Yeah, going to be a pretty big matchup. And again, four not doing a four not thing, kind of taking some funky solo laners out here. But lots of strength here in this comp. Certainly, you mentioned the siege power there, but the pick potential also that you harped on about someone a spear lands here. Someone's probably going to die. I mean, the pick potential from sudden fear has to be mentioned as well. The Sandra uh, fuck, uh, facilitates so many picks, and with the Rengar coming through with the bowler. I worry for Moya. The cleanse would at least give him a lot of defensive options. In fact, we sometimes see Nidalee's pick up Ignite just to look for trade kills or to play even more aggressively in lane. With the heal, if we ever do see the Frozen Tomb and the Thrill of the Hunt combination coming through and all of Rengar's burst, only has the heal, which won't be useful against the Ignite that perhaps is itemized. So Nidalee's going to have to be very defensive. When you see a Nidalee with summoner heal, it means they're going to be looking to play for max range, not really looking to get into melee range as much. And maybe we'll be punished. Maybe. I mean, lots of good uh, initiation potential, like the wild growth combo there with the Rengar. Lissandra even can benefit there as well. But going to move into the bottom lane now because we have, again, another interesting matchup. CNJ going to take Lucian, a champion that kind of like Ezreal, he seems to favor a bit more. Seems to be a big Caitlyn Ezreal player just in general. Lucian Jana, perfectly fine bottom lane. Uh, Lucian Jana, I mean, it's a pretty strong Jana lane, reminiscent of Lucian Graves. Oh, sorry, uh, Jana Graves in terms of just adding extra AD for Lucian to power down the waves in the middle in the in the early game. Ezreal Blitzcrank, you don't necessarily see the huge synergy at level one. You know, you don't even at level two when the when the hook combinations come through. Not a lot of burst damage coming out from Ezreal until the ultimate is available. Because all the mid Ezreal makes you realize that if it's the first target hit, that ultimate 300, I believe, base damage does a lot of damage. So at level six, definitely a lot of kill potential. But you can see Brawler, he's kind of picked it for the comp. He doesn't have the ignite. He's not necessarily looking for the level one, level two kills. But there is kill pressure at level six from that lane. Yeah, just more pick potential here. I mean, we might even see a lane swap here. A little weird with an Ezreal Blitz, but could see what happens. I mean, plenty of options for both sides here in Sudden Fear again. Hopefully they've regrouped, sort of picked themselves up from what was a very close game there against the Diolves and Fournot coming in fresh with some very Fournot picks. I believe you mentioned the Diana game. Top, I think that was Carlos's God. It was Carlos's God, absolutely. I believed it was Fournot the last time. Maybe going to see most, more success. We've seen so much Diana over at IEM, specifically from G in the mid lane for World Elite, but people always love to play that Diana. The Nashville's tooth is always the big question mark. Do you pick that up early and kind of pigeonhole hold yourself into a split pushing build? Of course, with the attack speed and cooldown reduction, just power down those turrets so fast. But the Abyssal Scepter Zonias, that's usually the team fight build. Diving the back line, being able to use the ultimate twice, the Lunar Rush. Lots of flexibility coming through from Diana builds, but you can kind of tell what a team's game plan is from what your Diana's building. Yeah, I mean, it's almost this like that uh, Diana almost feels like Lissandra with some of the engagement. We do have a pause at the start of the game, by the way, so still waiting a little bit of extra time here before we get him, but it shouldn't be too much longer. But we mentioned already that with the Lissandra flex pick, that would have been maybe an awkward matchup for Diana to navigate. What do we think about the top lane matchup now? Because it's Lulu versus Diana instead. I mean, Lulu versus melee champions is always going to be painful for the melee champion. You just hit those auto attacks, which are empowered by the passive. Just take a lot of damage in the laning phase. So you, have to you usually have to pick up maybe a flask to navigate the early laning phase just to have enough regen to get through it but Lulu 
She has great wave clear. Diana can answer with wave clear, but not usually until she gets a few levels. You know, it's not usually until level seven that Diana can kind of instant clear those waves because she needs to get the few autos and apply her passive. And that's a window for Lulu to do so much trade damage. So if you're focused on minions, a bit of a struggle when you're trying to push the lane. Lulu, I think she'll play aggressively and push in the Diana. And I think the first teleport play, maybe that's where Diana will be able to, around level six, really be able to impact other lanes. Because in lane, until the Abyssal Scepter and specifically the Negatron Cloak is finished, kind of struggle. Yep. And to me, it almost feels like it's Fauna, you know, playing their trademark picks in some ways with the Needle Limit, with the Diana, versus fairly standard stuff, I guess, from Sudden Fear. I mean, maybe the damage problem is there for Sudden Fear. They've got lots of good CC, lots of big potential, but Ezreal, Lulu, Lissandra, not that much damage in the later stages of the game. Yeah, I mean, burst damage coming through from Lissandra is always confirmed. But Ezreal, as you mentioned, we'll have to wait and see which Ezreal build. It's been a lot of people favoring the Mana Moon into Trinity Force build. You still do a lot of damage. We've seen that from the mid Ezreals. It just explode in terms of the mid game in terms of damage. But if they fall behind in lane, if, those hit, if they hit those item timings a bit late, you know, maybe 28 minutes on the Mirror Mana Transformation, 30 minutes until the Trinity Force comes through, you can always be a step behind in terms of damage. And as an Ezreal, you can struggle in these fights. There's a very strong front line you have to mention. The Lulu Wild Growth is likely going to be riding upon the Rengar, who's at this point the solo front line. So if the front line holds true, you can still do a lot of consistent damage in a fight, but you don't necessarily have the burst of a Graves or the consistent damage of a Vein. So a flexible choice, very escapable, doesn't need a lot of peel. So that's why we see so much engage from the other members at this point. And for Moon, he has to peel for himself. We have to also remember. And for Moon, he's a very good Ezreal player. Already has one carry performance this season on that champion. Maybe they're just letting him do what he does on the champion he's so comfortable on. Yeah, I mean, even Lucian in the last game against the Dial was perfectly good mobile carry. Oh. Performed very well there in that game, despite the loss again there for Sudden Fear. So plenty of good stuff for them to look forward to. And I mean, I think with how aggressively they played in the last game, probably looking to replicate that here again because there's lots of early and mid-game power here for the Sudden Fear Comp. They probably need to start getting picks and snowballing the game. Well, the way I characterize it is that Fortnite have a lot of siege options. Once you see an AP mid Italy, you know those spears are going to be hurting. They're going to be big stacks of AP are going to be coming out from Moya. Again, Carl Carlos is, God around, is good around those situations. So it's going to be siege against hard engage. That's the, that's the comps that we have picked. And, you know, whichever, if Sudden Fear get ahead in the early game and the siege never comes through, Fortnite will struggle. But Rengar, Lulu, Lissandra, so much gap close and engage. Yeah, we do still have a pause to remember as well. So just waiting a little bit longer till we start off the game here, but shouldn't be too much longer for a lot of these players. Kind of looking down again, trying to get into some of the more specifics. We actually have a couple items bought through as well, so we can at least talk about that. But nothing particularly major. Maybe Jana with the ancient coin, sort of the interesting thing there. I mean, Jana usually goes towards the... Uh, the AP item, just to have a bit of poke in lane, just try and navigate the lane. And, and especially in a ranged versus melee matchup, I would expect that, because you're usually able to get auto attacks against a Blitzcrank. Maybe that's the first tip of the coin that we're going to see. Tip of the coin, that's a bad pun. That we're going to see a lane swap come through, because, of course, going to pick up a bit more gold as the minions die in the other lanes. But at the, to me, the item build that, that jumps out is the Doran Ring pickup on Diana. Hasn't actually gone for the potions necessarily, not the Flask 3 potions for the heavy sustain. Lulu, I feel like she's going to have an easy time poking this Diana out of lane and might have to use that teleport very, very early to just buy a bit more sustain and a ward to navigate this laning phase in the Diana versus Lulu matchup. Possibly. I mean, is that is that the point where Fortnite maybe even consider a lane spot? We've seen Diana be quite effective in double jungle situations because in some ways she was originally a jungle and does very good damage to those neutrals. I mean, the jungle follows an option, uh, definitely, and it would be advantageous here just to get Diana in that lane swap because in a 1v2 if she's just sitting in lane doesn't offer very much can maybe try and snipe out creeps with the Q but in the jungle follow she can just level up her shield be very resistant in the in the jungle and just abuse that passive to do a lot of AoE damage so that's a strategic area It'd be interesting to see if Fortnite uh, follow that uh, but we have seen it in other regions so it's a possibility yeah we'll see here as well I do like that perhaps has his ignite as well so be more aggressive on the Lissandra wants to make sense I guess the thing I like about mid Lissandra is that you have a lot more freedom just to roam between the lanes and try and get, get kill pressure with your ultimate and it's Lissandra versus Nidalee who has a lot of heals and summon a heal so ignite going to be doing so much work cutting down the heals from Nidalee so I do like the aggressive pickup and if you've got a Rengar jungle have confidence in your jungler take the ignite so if the Empowered Bowler comes through on the thrill of the hunt. The Frozen Tomb's applied. Then there's definitely kill potential for this mid lane for Sudden Fear. Yeah, remember, still pause here as well, but about two minutes or left uh, until that uh, resolves. So not too much longer here until we sit through the game and kind of looking down Brawler, man. I have to highlight him, actually. Played a great game on Lulu up against the Dialves there. Again, loves his kind of oddball supports. Doesn't tend to pick into the meta. And this... 
as far as we're concerned, it's his trademark champion, the Blitzcrank. Yeah, I'm, I imagine that somewhere a T-Gun's a bit disappointed that he isn't the uh, relevant Blitzcrank member on campus, but it's Brolo who's played a couple of games on this Blitzcrank. He's got very good hooks. We've seen those potentially. Would have loved to see the Callista Blitzcrank come through just with that amazing interaction between Fate's Call and uh, the Blitzcrank uh, rocket grab. But Brawler, again, th the laning phase and definitely not the burst coming through from Ezreal to necessarily see very early kills. But in the late game, a lot of potential targets, specifically Moya on the Nidalee, that the rocket grab can be used to target. Yeah, and I actually quite like it. In almost counter siege situations as well, we've talked about all the poker and four knots comp picking either Nidalee or Jana, who are very strong components to keeping, kind of keeping your team off them when you're trying to engage. Actually, could be quite useful. Absolutely, and you look down the four knot lineup. There's no super tank. There's no Scion that you really don't want to hook. Everyone, even Nio on on Lee Sin, usually doesn't build that tanky. So there is the potential to burst down any of the five members that come through. So as you mentioned, as a fifth pick, you don't normally see a fifth pick support that really unsettles a team comp. But Blitzcrank about as close as that to the poke siege comp coming through from Fauna. Yeah, I mean, it was the same thing in the draft. There were just flex picks on both sides, about three or four of them, it feels like, in the first six picks. But we are onto the rift now here for this next game. Fauna versus Sudden Fear. Sudden Fear looking for a win after a very close game against the Wolves, and Fauna looking for their first. Yeah, Fauna really want to get a win on the board. They still have a slim chance of making it to playoffs, so they want to make it count, and they've got to win every game ahead of them to some degree to really run up in the standings, and this is the start. Yeah, five games the dream here for Fauna, and like you said, it all start series just some defensive fanning out here moving through just some defensive wards from the trinkets will be placed down there as well nothing too unusual right now so probably going to break out into the expected standard lanes here but pink boom we're just going to have a little bit of a battle there with carlos has got you never really know until the one minute 40 hits their page time as people start to move towards jungle camps but as you mentioned looking like standard lanes and you have to think diana going to struggle only two potions only 300 health available with those two purchases to be able to navigate a tough landing phase against Lulu. Yeah, Sudden Fruit Christmas Trees was spotted out by a Trinket Ward there as well, I think. No, actually sitting on top of his own ward, never mind, was okay there. Just kind of hanging out in the bush. Blitzcrank potentially could look for a late invade here. Could see that coming through as well there for Brawler. And Relic Shield here, actually a Mana Potion. Love that pick up there by Blitz. Yeah, Mana Potion, absolutely. I mean, 120 mana, I believe, for the hook. Just is so much of your mana pool. 260 at level 1, so it's just a couple of hooks and then just sitting for regen. Not sure how much regen he's running from Runes, but the 100 mana coming through will at least give him a little bit, little bit more threatening possibility in the bottom lane. Yeah, jungles are going to start here on the same side of the map. Nye going to move Krugs into red buff there and Gromp into blue buff there over on the other side. So King Burma here on the Ringo. Probably going to look for a full clue. I imagine Naya going look to something, look to something similar. Yeah, we just have seen actually a drop in aggression coming out from Lee Sin players across regions. Less level 3 ganks. Maybe it's just the predictability of the level 3 ganks. We'll remember a long time ago in the jungle, level 2 ganks were popular then no one was doing it so a level two gank was that much more surprising so Lee Sin never predictable of course can they'll close so much distance even just from the trinket ward can do some amazing things in terms of ganks whether he goes for level two level three gank or just farms we'll have to see it's the first hook on Zelda great grab there by Brawler actually winning him the trade there against the support cost him a lot of mana but worth it there to poke down Zelda's Janna it has high base damage pastry time so even as a harassment tool at level one doing 80 damage and then of course the auto attacks coming through from both members Zelda has to cup a couple of potions. Level two, though, importantly, reached by C and J and Zelda for four nine. Done a very squishy there as Moya battling Paps. They're actually good damage coming in. Speaking of early level two damage, Moya just ripping into Paps now. Naya here as well. The level two gank is going to come through. Paps dodging in his mini wave. Great flash there by Naya. And Moya gets first blood. Both Naya and Moya on champions. They're so comfortable. And look at the great synergy. I love the fact that Moya held on to his pounce till after the glacial path had been finished by Paps. They pick up first, but so, so early. We actually had that shy thought. Will we see the level two gang from Lee Sin? And Naya came through. Really did there, and you mentioned it. In Four Knots qualification process, it really was the jungle and mid laner pulling through, and that synergy's still here. I mean, the synergy's always been there. They just struggled so much against some of the top opposition in the OPL. Such a confidence booster, especially after watching a very impressive early game from Sudden Fear. This time, it's Fauna on the front foot. Yeah, back in the top lane, though. Lulu versus Diana is our matchup. Pretty even on CS right now. Carlos has got holding his own despite the range versus melee matchup and keeping pretty healthy with the Doran's ring. Hasn't even gone for the biscuits, which you can see are available on so many members of Sudden Fear. Clearly, they value these utility masteries as biscuits on both their top and mid lane, let alone their support. They're so tasty here as Emperor Moon. Going to clear out a couple of minions there in the bottom side of the map. 
doing a very nice job on the Ezreal, keeping the wave back, but Lucian kind of expecting this matchup, I guess, pushing very aggressively with his passive early on. Yeah, absolutely. That's what you want to do against Blitzcrank. Sounds counterintuitive, because of course, you don't want to be hooked on the turret and take burst damage, but at this top level, you just trust yourself to stand behind the minions, and you have to remember that if the enemy minions are pushing into your turret, there's free reign for Blitzcrank to go for a hook. You don't have the protection of the minion wave, which 4 not do at the moment. Yeah, Christmas Tree is now pushing in Diana as well. You mentioned it, that Diana's wave is pretty good, but has to get fairly close to actually use it, even going to pop the shield just to trim the wave back here, but Lulu's just such a good early laner. It's important to know that Diana's wave clear is good around seven, level 7 to 9. In the early levels, you have to get the auto attacks in, apply the passive, even use your shield, and it's quite mana intensive, but Naya's actually in position, misses the Q, backs out as Rengar was also sniffing around. Yeah, Pink Bomi was actually quite low, hadn't gone back to the shop yet. Naya will return here in the top side, does now Christmas choose with the Q there, but just a bit of harassment damage. I'm just also getting your eyes in for the Lee Sin mechanics, they're on point the second time, or Already were great in the mid lane. Moya playing so, so aggressive. Swapping auto attacks. Paps has to be careful. Yeah, not even actually hunted there is Paps. And Moya missed the first spear, but he's got a trap. He's aggressively playing around their spear. Didn't quite follow the glacial path, but Paps is getting very low here. There's so much map pressure, and this suits Lee Sin to a T, because remember, it's against the jungle. Oh my goes God. in. Moya just assassinates Paps under the turret. Will not go down here, and Naya in to make sure the counter gank doesn't come through. Incredible play. This lives on double figure health. So well calculated by Moya. Just didn't expect to pastry time. Nidalee, mid Nidalee, it's not played by many people, but played so well, it's in the bottom lane. It does a lot of damage here as Zelda does disengage there with the Tornado. A brawler brawling here as M for Moon, going to move in good poke there onto C and J. Threads the Mystic Shot through and Brawler might line up another bit of CC. Zelda very low, C and J quite low as well. M for Moon, the lowest of all here in the bottom lane. There's so much aggression across the board in the OPL. Wheat Bix definitely sponsoring this week's episode. It's just so much aggression. CNJ taking notes from M for Moon last series and doing excellent work. Yeah. Now they're going to clean out the Scotter Crab. Level 5 already on the Lee Sin with some great ganks there. Two, uh, one kill participation already there. Two kills though for Moyu who's starting to go off on the Nidalee. And Nia's even looking for a dive now. This would be aggressive. Oh, Infamoon gets nailed there and CNJ just cleans him out. Nia doing so much work on the Lee Sin. I mean, both Moya and Nia, very similar names, very similar ability at hitting line skill shots in the first six minutes. 3-0. It's the complete reverse of the previous game. Sudden Fear, they jumped up to a huge lead against Dire Wolves, and this time it's Fauna against Sudden Fear. Yeah, battling very aggressively here. Even the Sork Shoe's done early on from the Nidalee, who wants to keep laying into this. Lissandra might have bitten up a little too much there. Moya going to get the first shoot. Level 6, not really an upgrade here. The Spear is going to miss and has to be careful of the Paps level 6. I think actually Moya was happy to miss this because if he'd gone in on the Pounce, the uh, Q would have registered and he would have died mid-air on that Pounce. He's in top. See some aggressive trades there as well. You can see on the mini-map the top lane is fighting. Fighting across the map. Well, Carlos has got it. Actually going to fight for a pink ward here. Does get the first one there. Both of them going to get cleaned out here. Q does land. Carlos has got Will not follow in with his ultimate though. And he's going to clear out a stray minion that wandered into the bush. Yeah, just so much action across. We'll have to try and take, take stock of what's happening. The advantage is in mid lane. The two kills. The CS though is in the advantage of Lissandra despite all that action in the mid. Yeah, and I mean, Moya's just been trying to kill Lissandra over and over. The Paps has been using that very effective wave clear, but Moya now has some free time in the mid lane in Cougar form, gonna rip through these minions And as well. that's the reality, is that when you're not going for kills, when you're trying to uh, clear minions, the only AoE clear you have is the pounce in melee range. You don't want to get in melee range of Lissandra at any point, so it has to show that respect. Hook misses though down the bottom, and Moon gets out of the piercing light, though CNJ chasing in onto Brawler, just doing very good damage there. And this Landing phase doesn't get any better for Ezreal Blitzcrank. Remember, Ezreal is going to be opting into the Mana Moon. Only has a tear and a longsword. Doesn't even have the pickaxe towards the uh, the Mana Moon completion. So in terms of combat stats, way behind the But look at that hook. Zelda going to get grabbed. They're trying to send to the bay for Nidalee. Moya gets the first kill. Now going to dive in onto Brawler. Culling comes out, but Naya is here to chase it off. The Q lands there, and he gets the kill. Kicks Pink Bomi back, flashing out of the way to try not to die. The teleports come through as well, but Fornut might even redive. Yeah, I mean, Naya will die. Fornut, don't look for the redive. Amazing flashy plays coming through from Naya. The whole team, barring Diana, rotate into the bottom lane. I think Christmas Tree is actually teleported defensively. Going to buy a lot of time Diana to shop confidently in the top. The first purchase, a, 
actually going to be a blasting one. So matching aggression with aggression, I like it from Carlos's God, and he'll appreciate this free time to push up the way. Yeah, the Diana passive just does work on turrets. You can see Moon, Moon Civil Blade just getting into the structures here. Moya with the Shocks is doing so much early damage. Here. You can see maxing that Q, of course, for maximum assassination damage. Carlos is God going to take this turret. It seems like going to take up a couple hits here, but we'll take it safely. Oh, that's a very early out of turret. I believe the reinforcements just falling away. But DPS down. Castle's God might die. Oh. Has to flash away from the minions. Dies oh, anyway. Oh, the minions. Can a minion too powerful there? Kind of thought about it a little late and unfortunate there. That was awkward. It was awkward. But you know he'll take his gold. Take the free shot. That's what it was, right? And uh, pick up his uh, Negatron Cloak for his Abyssal Scepter. He set, saved so. himself some seconds on the blue pill. I like it. Nobody got the kill gold. Nobody noticed that. It's all right. It's fine. We didn't get it on camera. It's not recorded forever on the internet. As Paps moves back now. Morellonomicon almost completed here as well. But uh, Chalice actually coming through from Moya is quite an interesting adaptation. Chalice from Moya. So I guess it's going to be a return to the Athenes. This is the build that we saw popularized when mid Italy was terrorizing everyone. We're going to see the replay coming through. Carlos's guard. He's not going to get away from this lightly as he pays three times. No, he's not here. And that last order from the Canicry. Watch oh. it slowly come through and Tough then just OP. goes off into the rift. Yeah, perhaps so actually forced to run away here from Moya here. Carlos has got... Rotating in decides that, you know what, top lane's not safe. The minions are too strong. And now going to move in towards the mid side. Moya gets some wards done. Four, not one, a dragon. I mean, look, there's so much mid game kind of coming up from both Moya and Carlos has gone. Look at the spear damage. Yeah, and actually looking for an engage as well. Has to dodge the Diana Q. And Moya, like you mentioned, those spears do so much already. This big item purchases, although not the completed Abyssal Scepter, the parts of it completed. The warrior enchant is done. No sign of a side stone yet. They will be able to pick up the first dragon. And Rengo in Sudden Fear, smart to back away and fight another day. Yeah, first Dragon, first turret, and 5-1 and kills here for Fornot. That's 2,000 gold ahead here as Carlos has got looking in for a gank. Q just a little short there onto Apex, who does have the blue buff, and then will walk back to the top lane. I believe the Diana E, the Peo Cascade, does actually, so the Moonfall does actually interrupt the Glacial Path channel as I believe the aggression down bot isn't going to stop anytime soon. No mid lane though, Pink Bone going to dive in, flash, ulti's actually, there's Pat following in, and Moya will get locked down and CC it, heal not enough there as Ignite will get that next kill and a successful gank there by Bomi, Cast is God though in the area trying to make something happen, gets bowled for the slow and has to be a bit careful now, Paps might follow in with a snare, Cast is God wants to fight but no help forthcoming here, 2v1 in this situation, but sudden fear not committing. And in the bottom lane you can see on the minimap more aggression coming through. Yeah, kill there for Naya there. Lee Sin again here. He is used to save his life, but another successful gank. You can see why Naya doesn't pick up the uh, the early sights. I mean, he needs those combat sets because he's going to be diving turrets early. The turret does go out. 2-0 and in turrets. A big gold lead for this early in the pace, game page time. Almost 3,000 gold advantage for Fauna. Yeah, and this is the start that probably Sudden Fear wanted with their fairly snowbally pick comp here. Fauna, you know, looking for Cedars, looking to get control around objectives, but if they're getting these kills, they're happy with this control they have already. But the big issue for Sudden Fear is it's hard to skirmish early when Rengar's still scaling up, finally hit level 8, saw the big first throw of the hunt come through with a successful gank. Christmas is taking a lot of damage, it's very overextended. Gonna get Can the, he get away? Gonna get the tower, force to use the ulti, Lunar Rush, no reset though, and out of mana, Christmas trees will waddle back to safety. The flask, of course, would have given some mana sustain, has no mana sustain, just the Dorans, the active mana sustain coming through. But we have to mention the tiers slowly stacking up for Infamoon. It's a long time so it's going to be relevant. I believe the normal part time is about 25 minutes into the game for the Mirror Man transformation. A team that's looking to push so aggressively, already two out of turrets against a scaling team. And for Moon in the bottom lane, actually has to run away. Uh, Andre's just got him dead there. Can't do anything against Solution. I mean, did have Arcanchi, but that's not enough range and didn't have his flash. And they're trying to seat down the last out of turret. Naya does hit the Q, won't take the resonating strike. Enough members to back away. But Sudden Fear are eating a lot of poke. You have to think the last out of turret will come down very soon. Yeah, Moya maybe needs a blue buff. Don't think he has one right now, but Poke's still moving in. A beautiful Q, actually just missing Pat there, but the Rico will get cancelled off as we've got Nidalee just off screen to you right there. Brawler actually looking for the hook. Blue buff is here for Nidalee and it should be a successful siege by Fauna. The turret pushing for Fauna. We mentioned their sieging comp is actually very strong despite having melee champions Diana. Her passive does affect turrets as we say so. Split push is strong. Ranged support, ranged mid laner and all this damage in sieges. Slow moving in. Q just missing Christmas trees. Forced to flash actually out of it. Pink Bomi going to dive in. Zelda going to get low. Brawler here as well. Pops his ulti. Naya gets knocked out there by the power of his kickback. Won't be quite enough and Christmas trees gets a kill. But it's a 4v3 situation definitely over push Carlos has got only now rotating with his team 
Gets ulted though by Lissandra. Q coming in there. Zaldo. Little low there. Forced to Mons in for the reset. Moya really wants it, but the culling almost kills Brawler on its own. CNJ going to dive in. Paps though with a good slow, but Fornot really want this turret. And we can see the edge where Edelman comes with. Does clear out the way. Fornot have to back away. Yep, Zelda though actually going to take a tower hit, but Power Cascade will protect him there with that shield. Actually, no, it does there. You get the initial shield, I believe, and then, the, nope, I have no idea how that ability works. Never mind. That's okay. So the fast push has been very successful base time. Three out of turrets in 14 minutes. They're not stopping. They're not letting Ezreal power up at all. Very, very weak right now is M for Moon. The polar opposite of the previous game. And Bomi tries to walk through confidently. Too much damage coming in. The slow lens in. And Moya nails him with a spear. The max range spear overkilling the Rengar. But again, those Nidalee mechanics. Lee Sin and Nidalee so on point with the long range skill shots. And why would they leave Papa Smithy? Moya, Naya, Moya sorry, keeps landing spears on this Nidalee. There's just so much progress. Old school hotshot GG style spearing them from the side of the turret. But importantly, see. very low in mana. We'll have to go into Cougar form to affect this next fight but they've already got the outer turret. Maybe now is the time to back away. Need a blue buff for next time, but the Siege, it's working a tree. Yeah, dragging up in a minute 45, so Four not have to run back quickly for that one. Naya will clear out a word. Blue buff actually going to get stolen away here, so very nice timing on that one. Actually, CNJ gets it. Moya perhaps a little upset by that exchange, but Four not are fine. They'll back away. I'm sure the blue buff will be coming up for Four not very soon, so won't be out without blue buff for too long. You actually see one of the disadvantages of running the Sandra mid in this comp. She's the only true, uh, she, she and Lulu are the wave clear, but whenever Lissandra walks up to wave clear, she's in prime target to be hit by a, a Nidalee Q is in the mid lane. Paps has gotten a bit overly aggressive. Uh, yep, that's an understatement there as the kill does come through. The hook lands in on Tazaldo there as the double comes through for Sudden Fear. All calculated, had the teleport advantage, didn't even need it as Brawler came through. Four man beats the two man skirmish machine that was happening from Fornot. And finally, the second outer turret will come down for Sudden Fear. So good push in here for Sudden Fear. Dragon actually available 50 seconds or so. They'll take the turret back away, maybe look to regroup for the dragon, but big wave there on the top side that Carlos has got has been working on a Fauna, now in prime position to take their second dragon. And we were mentioning, if you see a Nashos Tooth Diana, that will tell you whether they're going to opt into Split Bush. We might still see that, but look at this pickup from Illusion. It's not the high damage option. It's not the Infinity Edge. He's going for the Bloodthirst, and what Bloodthirst it gives is when you're rotating around, picking up these turrets, you're usually going to hit some minions, push some minions, have the maximum Bloodthirst to shield built up. You can take an extra turret hit and have have the extra lifesteal, 23% lifesteal between the Doran Blade and the Bloodthirster, and just be able to stay so healthy during these sieging situations. So building for Siege himself, Lucian, and in terms of uh, team fight damage, still going to be doing relevant damage. Yeah, and that means it's time for sieging and rotations here for Fauna, which is exactly what their comp is set up to do there, especially with Moya having a nice Nidalee game here at 4 1 and 1. Athene's now done as well. Tells me even here for John, Fauna have plenty of tools here for this next dragon. With all this damage being built up, it's a bit of a shooting gallery for Blitzcrank. Maybe it's going to be Brawler's time to shine. He needs to get the pick on either Lucian or Nidalee. And during all this time, the turret goes down in the bottom lane. Yeah, Naya just kind of zoning them off there, poking at the Blitzcrank as Brawler actually threw out a hook that did miss after Naya hopped away and Fornot dragged them back alive. Another turret getting taken out. You can see the power of the Diana plus the Bloodthirst Illusion and this dragon should be theirs as well. So I feel they're respecting the power of the poke coming through. Melee champions or short range champion walking through that cove will eat so much damage from Spears or potentially initiation coming through from Naya. Second dragon, it's okay to sacrifice a uh, sudden fear, not losing too much extra, but of course, losing position on what could be a massive third dragon. Rotational sieging comps with the third dragon have so many advantages. And then for Moon, the bottom lane, still slowly stacking up that tier, still looking for that first big power spike. Yeah, the nice thing though about the second dragon, at least for the way Fortnite want to play, is that it actually transitions nicely for them because they're already looking to push down turrets. That's true, so of course the extra turret damage will be very helpful. But now that they have to back away, Lucian's pushing in the top lane. Everyone's putting up gold, but there's the hard engage. Yeah, caught off there. Actually, hooked there as well. And the ulti used by Lissandra. No, not even needed there. Wild Growth does get popped up for Apex, but an easy secure there. Another four-man dive. Cast got smart not to use any of his summons. Was definitely dead with all the CC coming through from Sudden Fear. That's the thing about Siege Comps. When you finally do gap close on them, when the throw of the hunt is used so effectively, the initiation power is for all to see, and Fornut are a bit brittle in terms of frontline. The Pink Bermuda eats a spear that takes a big chunk of damage here. Moya powering up here on the Nidalee for sure. Another poke lands there onto Apex, who's now at a third health, and they're going to continue on. They're not afraid of Brawler, as Christmas Tree is going to get a little low as well. Bowler will land to disengage, but Naya looking for someone. Misses everyone, unfortunately. There is going to die back in. A beautiful ult to use there as Emperor Moon gets the first kill onto 
Rosaldo, but CNG there pops. He's off the cast. He's got in the back line. A great flank there and a double moonfall onto the carries. He flashes over forward. CNJ gets the next kill. And for Moon, very low. Almost going to go down as our Christmas trees. Hunter by the Nidalee going to be the next target and gets the double for Lucian. Carlos is God there cleaning them out and an ace completed by Fournot. Triple kill for Carlos is God. You can do so many things in a team fight if you're unseen. With the teleport, the flank was wonderful. Got into the back line. That's the thing about Diana is that she has repeated gap close if she's able to register her Q and then apply the Lunar Rush. And it's very, very tanky. She, of course, double scales with AP and magic resist because the AP works on the shield. The magic resist because shield acts like health is basically extra magic resist. So just very, very tanky in the front line. The double AP just not even uh, tickling Carlos has got. And a triple kill is a massive result. We'll snowball her towards either the Nationals' tooth for split pushing or the Zonia's for the stasis option in the back line. Yeah, and a nice lead here as well. 5,000 gold actually up for Fortnite. A very similar looking position that Sudden Fear found themselves in in their last game here. But backs against the wall a little bit. Emperman has finished his Trinity Force, so a nice pick up there, but still looking to stack that tier up. Lucian actually moving in for a Trinity Force of his own, though. I mean, Trinity Force Lucian used to be a standard build when he had more range. Zaldo yep. looks to clear out a ward. Trying to ward, gets caught up. Unfortunately, by the jungler, Brawler there as well, and Pink Boomy gets that kill. The story of a support's life, doing the tame thing, dying, just patting the stats of some assassin on the enemy team. I mean, there's so much engaging of a sudden fear. Fortnite probably have to ward a little bit more together here. The body system probably should be in place there because there's lots of scary threats here roaming out, but still a big lead there for Fortnite. One kill, not too bad. To be honest, stage. they just want to be grouped as five. They're not really looking to split push. They're just looking to really engage. You can see there was no... Uh, there's no Stinger, there's no building towards the Nash, so it's going to be the Zonia's the second pickup. That's a team fight build coming through from Diana. They need Diana as a pseudo frontliner with her inherent tankiness with the Pale Cascade Shield. And they need to stay grouped as five and just try and keep pushing. Pushing's working. Keep doing that, because if ever certain item timings are hit, for example, Ember Moon hitting his next big damage item, the team fight comp from Fortnite does fall away compared to all the AoE CC coming through from Sudden Fear. Yeah, Moya, they good poke damage as well. Sort of a mid range spear there with the need to see Large Rod chunking out Ezreal for about 25% of his life here. And this is what Fortnite want to do. They've already taken plenty of towers. Love that Lucian's working on the top side of the map already. Fortnite know what's next. They're going to kind of take each layer of towers away. I believe this is the last outer turret on the map. So it's the last easy turret for them to pick up. So much harder around the choke points at the inhibitors. Definitely going to be lining up for the thrill of the hunt, which at the moment is 50 percent off cooldown. Here's the engage. Pink, Pink Boomy in there as well, but he gets ulted. Does poor Naya there. The first kill does almost go to Nope. Actually, Pink Boomy still alive there. Finally goes down. And Cast is gone. He's ripping through people in the back line as this is all happening. Another double there for Diana. CNJ poking in. They'll take the three for one. With the Sheen and the Fade, it's a burst build coming through from CNJ on the Trinity Force. This is what we used to see on, uh, on Lu Lucian's before the rework on his skills, before his uh, range was lowered. And you can see with the Bloodthirst, the shield gets extra poke onto this turret. It's going to fall very soon. Yeah, Nidalee's E going to help out with a bit of push. Look, Carlos has got dominating now. Going to jump in for the next kill. Emperor Moon runs very far away. Almost gets tagged by another Q. And Born out of broken the base. They're going to get an inhibitor at 21 minutes. Every time he hits a Crescent Strike, he's using that Lunar Rush, getting and doing so much burst damage. People do who don't play against Diana don't respect just quite the burst he can do. Bomi's going for the flank. Throw the Hunt act. Activated. But four-man group, four not staying together. They're going to be able to steal away a red and get away. And Sudden Fear are so caught back in the back of the base. Let's watch Carlos has got so again. Naya goes for the big engage. Takes a lot of damage in the back line. But look at the burst coming through from Carlos has got once he engages in this fight. He's engaged upon by a hook roller. It feels like he hooked in an Amumu with just the amount of damage and back line threat that he had. The burst damage coming through consistently from Lucian. Definitely more about his auto attack. It's definitely more about his... Uh, his auto tracks when he's using his Q rather than necessarily the consistent damage, but the burst is there and the burst are plenty for Fauna. Yeah, we said that there were no real bad hook targets for Brawler. I think in this case it's this, evolved into Diana. Yeah, the slightly fed Diana is probably not who you want there. I mean, Zonia's I don't think was complete at the time, but nope. now is done. Blasting one here as well. Diana looking pretty strong here, and even Nidalee almost stung with her death cap. So now Diana has a decent amount of armor and magic, just about a hundred values or more for both. They're going to scale with the effective health coming through from the shield. Very, very tanky. Now the Pale Cascade moving towards the, uh, the fifth level on that ability. 
is going to function like a frontliner, but a frontliner with burst, not something you necessarily often see in League of Legends, but that's what Diana provides Yeah, you. and for good reason, because that sounds quite good as far as champions go here. And that's exactly what Fauna have for themselves. Dragon is live here. Third will go over to Fauna, it looks like, but Sudden Fear wants to contest. Pat going in there. Actually, Ult Skulls has got damage coming in, but Diana just going in. A great hook there. This time on the Brawl, the third Dragon does go down. The Pat in the back line, but Cast has got is still ripping through people, tying up so many resources. Still not dead here. So many shield gets polymorph but naya's diving in now and diana disgusting damage in the back line five for one in favor of four not and remember four not zero and eight before this game maybe this is going to be their first victory and a well-earned one on the back of finally those carries that propelled them through the ocs moya and carlos is god six one and ten this nearly seven two seven on this pseudo tank assassin diana this could be barren yeah, I mean, you know, a very strong half of the top, top half of the map, sorry, for Fortnite that we saw in that qualification series. As always, CNJ quietly overachieving when Fortnite are winning games, and this will be Baron here. Gold, 10,000 ahead here. Sudden Fear lost a Nexus to our battling super minions out here, and Fortnite, it will take some mistakes here. Many, many mistakes in a row to lose from this position. All three carries, carries, top laner, mid laner, AD carry, all fighting each other for MVP votes here doing wonderfully well and Sudden Fear, they just never managed to wrestle back the momentum after the hard push. The tier, especially on Emphamon, we still don't have a Mana Moon, less, let alone a Mirror Mana completed at 24 minutes into the game. Actually, it's a bit surreal that we're only 24 minutes in because there's been so much action and specifically so many turrets have fallen before the 25 minute marks, 10 turrets in all. But man, this game snowballed so, so quickly, and Ezreal, the poor Ezreal, just never got going. No, and there's just so many threats here. I mean, Moya now finished up the death cap, working on a Void stuff here in the Nidalee with blue buff now as well. Fauna are going to try and siege up now with Baron buff added into the mix for an already potent siege comp. And we said that Fauna needed to get things going now. It all starts one game at a time, but this first game looking good here. We just never got the big item timings for Sudden Fear, specifically a big AP stack to make a pink Bomi on Rengar a massive frontliner, you know, able to engage with the stealth of the thrill of the hunt and get a pick onto Nidalee, onto Lucian. That just never happened, unfortunately. Working towards an Abyssal Scepter, being forced to pick Magic Resist after getting picked so often. The spears are already starting to register. This outer turret's fallen low. Yeah, it looks dead here almost as Christmas Trees ports in, but it's not enough. Carlos has got diving straight in the back there, almost getting a kill instantly there. Christmas Trees just get treaded to pieces as CNJ goes good, like Culling popped in there as a hook goes wide, and Fortnite might just win the game. Fornot might win the game. They're looking for the kill on Paps. So much turret juggling. Nice zone he's there, but Moya, yep, spears him in the face. Yeah, this melee range spear. Not a big damage spear, but it's enough. And Fornot, it took nine games, but on the ninth attempt, oh, as CNJ. Lucian unfortunately Rip perfect dies. perfect score there. Dying at the end with a good hook for Brawler, but that is the only consolation here for Sudden Fear is Fornot. Five games of dream, Papa Smithy. That's game one. And Sudden Fear, we wondered how they'd rebound from a close loss, but a wonderful performance against the Direwolves. Unfortunately, that they didn't just bounce back. Fournot came out of nowhere. We haven't seen this team since February 19th, but they've been cooking up something special in the meantime. A wonderful victory from their team. Yeah, looking good so far. And you know what? Let's watch some of that again. We have a replay here, and this will be fun. All right, so this is the second dragon. They already had the second. This is the third dragon potentially coming through from Fournot. 17 to 9, so there's about a 7,000 gold lead coming through from Fournot. I believe we're going to see some things from Diana in this team fight based your time as we roll the tape. So they have to come through a narrow choke to start this fight. And before it starts, already the burst damage starts on Kalos' God. But he lives so long in the back line. Watch this, Diana. First applies the stasis. The wild growth comes in early. Diana lives and is doing consistent damage in the back line for so, so long. The Pale Cascade refresh comes through despite no CDR being completed on the Diana. Pseudo tank, true tank in this case, effectively tanking three to four members in the back line. Carlos has got masterful performance on the Diana. Yeah, and Fornot finally returned to their qualifying form, looking good here, but we're going to move into playoffs pretty soon. We're almost at the end of the OPL. 